Hey folks, welcome back to the Western Southern YouTube channel. Uh, today I'm going to give you three obstacles to getting outside on the weekend and three solutions that work for me with the hope that it helps you uh, spend a little bit more time outdoors on the weekend. Stay tuned. If you're doing a weekend trip, doing some truck camping, maybe you're going to do a weekend backpacking trip, maybe you're going to do a weekend uh, canoe trip or a uh, floating camping trip or something. Uh, Okay, so the first obstacle to kind of identify here is just kind of packing for a weekend trip can can be challenging. Uh, you know, you've been at work all week, all your cognitive resources got used up answering emails and doing stuff like that. So that being said, the thing that is really helpful for me is I use these these duffel bags to keep my gear in. So for example, I have this, this green duffel bag. This is like all of my fishing gear virtually. I got my waders in here. I got my wading boots in here. I keep a net down in there, my box for fly fishing, kind of assorted accessories up top here. I got everything in here, but the actual fishing rod, okay? So when I wanna go fishing, I just take this bag, grab it by the handles, throw it in the back of my truck, toss a fishing rod or two in the back, and then I'm ready to roll. I don't have to think, oh, did I bring my net? Oh, did I bring my wading boots? Oh, do I have my waders? Oh, it's really hot. I think I might use those wading socks well, they're in here too, right? I don't have to go looking around for things. When I go camping, so I have another one of these big duffel bags. And, and then I've collected these over the years. Um, this is a Gregory one. It's called an alpaca bag. I think this is like 100 liters or something. And uh, I virtually have like all of my camping gear in here. Keep my tent in there. There's a little rod, a ground cloth, some cooking gear, my little towel battery charger. Hell, there's even a cast iron skillet in this bag. And what I do is I just keep all my camping gear in here. When it's time to go, I'll take this, I'll toss it in the back of the truck, and I'm pretty much ready to roll. I don't have to think and go through a bunch of Rubbermaid bins behind a shelf in the garage or something like that. It's just all there ready to go. So I even have one with all my hunting gear in it at this point. I mean, the system has worked so well for me. I pretty much bought one, two, so I guess I've bought, bought three of these bags. I don't keep my hunting jacket hung up. I keep it in here. Um, it has enough space to where it doesn't lose its law. Oak bugles in here. I keep things like um, an extra release for my uh, bow and arrow in here. A box of shells in here, maybe down in the bottom somewhere. I may have to get a couple pieces. Maybe I have to throw another uh, bottle of camp, camping fuel in there or something along those lines. But the majority of stuff I need is right here. It's ready to go. I don't have to go dig it out and I don't have to use a bunch of time and energy looking for it after a long week at work before I can get outdoors and enjoy the weekend. Okay, now a couple things to know, you know, these duffel bags are actually kind of expensive. Um, I think this one's 110 liters. This one's maybe 110 liters or something. So they're really big and they're made out of this really kind of heavy duty plastic coated nylon. They're, they're, they're going to last a super long time. I think I've had this one eight years and it looks brand new. I've probably had this one five years. Um, and they're not totally waterproof, but they're waterproof enough with this coating that you can toss stuff in the back of the truck. And it's, as long as it's not a complete downpour, it's going to stay relatively dry. Um, I've had these bags get snowed on, uh, driven down the highway in rainstorms. And for the most part, things stay dry. By no means is it a dry bag. You can't submerge it. If it's in a, a week-long East Tennessee rain, the thing's gonna leak. These bags go on sale a lot of the time, and, and that's when you gotta buy them. If I'm gonna do a river trip and I need to use dry bags, well, then I'll just take my dry bag and empty stuff in here into my dry bag, and then I'm ready to roll. If I'm gonna do a backpacking trip or you know, hunting trip, and I got this guy, then I just you know put odds and ends in here and, and adjust as needed. But all of this stuff kind of stays like in the same corner, if you will, just to make the access easier. It's in one spot. I don't have to go digging around for it. And for me, that just that just really works. Okay, folks, so the second uh, kind of challenge when you're trying to get outdoors over the weekend is getting good sleep. If you go and spend the weekend outdoors, you don't get any sleep, you don't feel rested, the likelihood that you're going to go back out more often is, is probably pretty low just because you're not meeting your basic needs you're going to feel bad and, and it's just not going to be an enjoyable experience pretty much nobody sleeps great the first night in the woods unless they're staying outdoors on a regular basis so keep that in mind
This is the old school kind of foam pad. I mean, if you're 21 and you're sleeping on one of these, more power to you. I spent a lot of nights on one of these. Not so much my thing anymore. This is an old thermorest I've had for probably, God, 20 years or something. I mean, this is what people used to use a lot and um, they've come a long way. So really the thing that I sleep on the most is what's called a Paco pad or like a river bed. If you've seen my other videos, you've seen it. And basically, when people go whitewater rafting, they sleep on these big, heavy-duty, thick pads. Uh, this is actually made out of the same material that a raft's made out of. It's incredibly tough. You're not going to put a hole in it, and, um, it, you know, it's going to last forever. It's got open-cell foam inside of it, and uh, it's actually got a valve, a C5 or C7 leaf-filled valve from a raft. So it's uh, really, really heavy duty built. You can roll it up, squish the air out, close the valve, and uh, buckle the buckles, and it gets a little smaller. But this thing is huge, right? This is for truck camping. I'm 6'2", I weigh about 200 pounds, so I sleep on the big, heavy-duty, thick version of it. Uh, they make a regular size version like this. This is my wife's, and uh, it's quite a bit smaller. Um, not nearly as thick as you can see, but it certainly packs up to a lighter and more manageable uh, size. Now, obviously, if I'm going uh, backpacking right, I'm going to bring a backpacking pad. I stick with Thermarest. They've been doing this stuff for like, God, probably 50 years at this point. It's called the X-Therm, the wide pad. I, I don't sleep on the um, curved ones. This is a square one. I feel, I feel horrible that I kind of sold out, but man, get you one of these little pumps. They're a game changer. Way better than using the pump sack that comes with this. Um, these new pads, they don't have foam in them, so they're a lot thicker. And they have some kind of like baffling reflective material to make them warm. But that also means the volume of air that goes in them is quite a bit more than the old school self-inflating thermores pads. Um, you just unscrew the valve on those and give it a puff or two and you'd be ready. You have to inflate this whole thing, which is, which is pretty time consuming. One thing I need to do is take the batteries out and tape them to the outside so that the batteries don't go bad and leak uh, battery acid on the, on the terminals in here. Getting sleep is important, right? Make sure you have something nice to sleep on. Don't sleep on the ground. Don't try to sleep on a wool blanket. You know, there's a million different cheapo pads out there. You'll buy one, it'll pop, or it won't be comfortable at all. Then you'll just end up buying something like a Thermarest. It's a buy once, cry once kind of deal when it comes to sleeping stuff. All right, so last thing I'll talk about is uh, whatever food you eat, right? So you want to get out over the weekend. You've got something to sleep on so you can get some actual rest. You've got your gear in a duffel bag so that you don't have to go looking all over the garage trying to track it down. Now, what the hell are you going to eat out there, right? Oftentimes, that's the last thing people have to think about or stop and get on the way out. When it comes to food, in my opinion, there's two different uh, points of views, right? Some people like to go camping and they really enjoy cooking food. That's a part of the experience. More power to you. That, that's awesome, right? Some people really enjoy camp cooking. I'm actually in the other camp. I just want to eat peanut butter and jelly and maybe canned soup and, and get on with whatever the heck I went out to do in the first place. Doesn't matter which camp you're in, but I think it's important to kind of like name that. If I'm going backpacking these days, I just use the good old fashioned free stride stuff, right? Years ago when I first ate this stuff, I think I was like in Boy Scouts, I was a teenager. It was absolutely horrible. I don't even know what the hell I got, but man, has it come a long way. Uh, at this point, I like buy one of these like once or twice a year. It's like the value pack because um, I know I'm going to use them. Maybe shaves a, a, a dollar off each meal and then I just got them and I don't have to worry about tracking it down, right? It's kind of like the whole duffel bag thing. You know, I don't, I don't spend my money. Like I don't like have a TV, right? Like I don't spend my money on that kind of stuff. I spend my money on this kind of stuff. Um, you know, here's some granola. Here's some beef stew. Okay, there's a day, right? Maybe I throw some granola bars in or a PB and J, and, and that's that's my food for a day. If I'm going truck camping, I definitely don't eat this stuff. It's too expensive, right? Um, I save this for when I need to uh, go backpacking. The, these things are actually super light too, just so you know. Like they're like, I mean, they're not like air, but if you're gonna put food in your backpack, 
that's a definite advantage. Now, if I'm going truck camping, like I said, I use things like, uh, you know, peanut butter and jelly, you know, eat a lot of cans of Campbell's soup, man. You know, it just works, right? It's quick to heat up. I don't have a lot of dishes to do. I just throw some boiling water in the pot after I had the soup in there and it's pretty much clean. Um, you know, Dutch ovens are fun, but that's way more labor intensive. Um, you can just throw a bunch of stuff in a Dutch oven and, and put it on the fire if you like cook it on a fire and it'll cook pretty quick. Um, I have some like liners for a Dutch oven. That cuts down uh, a, a significant amount of the cleaning time. So the, the liners are nice to have. Idaho and mashed potatoes are great. Bringing things like bagels and tortillas instead of bread. Uh, peanut, like I said, peanut butter and jelly, some cheese, some pepperoni, some mystery meat, summer sausage things along those lines. I don't like to have eating be the focal point of whatever I'm doing outdoors. It might be fishing, maybe hunting, maybe doing something else. So that's easy for me. But by all means, if you wanna go out and make a camp meal, more power to you. Use that as kind of a driving force to get creative and get you out there in the first place. Just two different schools of thought. All right, everybody, I hope this is helpful. Uh, just a quick review, number one, you know, keep your stuff in a duffel bag. Makes it super easy to just get out there in the first place. You don't have to waste a bunch of time and effort tracking your stuff down. It's already in one spot. Getting good sleep, right? That's super important. If you don't get good sleep out there, you're not really gonna enjoy it and you're probably gonna do less things outdoors. That's and then last piece is kind of knowing what your food preferences are. Are you a person that really likes to cook and you wanna have that be part of the experience? Or are you somebody that's all business, you wanna eat a can of Campbell's soup and call it a day? Doesn't matter which one you are, just know which one so that you can kind of plan accordingly and, and try to conceptualize whatever trip you're doing in that way. Thanks again for watching and uh, stay tuned for some more videos. Take care, folks.